Should we start? So we can start. We can start, right? Okay. So what we did yesterday was, if you recall, we looked at the the you know patent searching guide, and then we went to that particular page and we said, can we search patents? And uh, that's what we essentially did. And this particular guide, uh, Professor Tumar will share with you uh, in the website. I've sent it to him just about an hour or so ago, or two uh, hour or two ago, and he will share it with you in the website. So you'll be able to get this guide and you can go page by page through it and uh, you'll be able to run it yourself as the way we did yesterday. Now, nevertheless, I thought it will be good to just take a few aspects of it and also look at some other additional features today. So I put here, please use this guide to understand and conduct your patent searches. The link to the guide is given below, not only it is given here in this particular slide, but the that's the link which has been given there. And the slides, all my slides of the five lectures are also being shared with all of you, okay, in the website. So you should have no problems whatsoever onto this. So that is where the guide is. But then let us just quickly look into now some of the things that we started off with. So we were at this stage, at the concept stage, where we were trying to define our problem and create our strategy for doing research. And we said that the first part of defining the problem and also creating the strategy for research out there would be to do a complete knowledge landscaping, including patent landscaping in that particular field or in that particular area. And that is where we looked at all this. And then we said that depending on what we get from there, from the landscaping, we work out what are the areas in which I can safely work and then create my research problem and research strategy. But with that, I also said that as we go along our research, as we go along with our research, there'll be lots of publications which will come in, number one and lots of patents will be filed, and those patents will also get published. So just as we look at journal literature, we must look at patent literature also continuously and update our landscaping as we go along in our research. So that is the first part we talked about. And therefore that search, patent search was so important, or not was, but is so important, number one. And number two, that that we said that more than 60 to 70% of what appears in patent literature does not appear in journals and books. So you have to see patent literature whatsoever. And if required, we will go through uh, a training program at a later stage, not as a part of this course, because this is only to give you a, a quick IV, a bird's eye view of what the situation, of what the issues are and how to tackle them but if required, we will go through a detailed workshop to really do this so that all of you become comfortable in doing patent searching work. So that's the first part. And then we said, as we do the exploratory work, we then have to identify whether our work is novel, in, at least in our estimate, our understanding. Is our work, uh, you know, having an inventive step, does that work have and industrial applicability, number three. And then we will also have to look at that whether we want to commercialize this at all. But if you want to commercialize this or we want to use it in a certain manner, then of course, protection becomes important. Then we may go and file, you know, patent applications, design applications, copyright applications for our work. So that's going to be something very, very important out there. So, that is the first part. The second part is that we said that these rights are territorial. If we want these rights in other countries, then we'll have to go and work out a strategy. How will we file our patents into 
in other countries. But mind you, filing patents in other countries are also very expensive. So we'll have to work out a strategy for that, whether it is cost effective. Therefore, commercialization is a very important feature that we must be looking at. Then, of course, you know, we may be doing collaborations. So we may be having joint work. Now there we may have, so therefore the questions will be, who all will be the inventors? Like in the paper, we have multiple authors. Here you can have multiple inventors, no issue. But then the multiple inventors, if they come from different institutions, then what are those understanding between those institutions? They also have to become very important. And once the initial part of the research and proof of concept is over, and then the work goes into the developmental stage, that's where you have to do a lot of thinking as to what are some of those aspects of your work which you don't want to disclose at all and keep your trade secrets and know how, right? So all these strategy while doing research becomes very important for us. So that becomes work in progress. And then when we go into the output phase, when we are going into the output phase, we then have to work out, okay, I don't file just one patent, I file a number of patents to sort of ring fence to protect my invention from various sides. I have to do all that. And that is the reason companies like, you know, Tata's or Godridge and Apple and Hindustan Lever and others file a number of patents all around an invention. So they try to protect themselves from all sides out there. So all that has to happen. And then many a times, it so happens that you may have filed the patent, you may have done that, but you may not commercialize. So what will you do? You will then do a transaction. You may give your patent to somebody or you may license your patent to somebody and let them do it. You get something in return out of that. So those are the type of entire set of processes in the, in the research value chain that we do. And as we go to the market, then somebody else does the marketing. But because there are certain agreements between you and them, you may get certain benefits coming from that as well. So that is something that is something that we need to understand holistically out there. And that's where the 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 um the entire strategy of IPR with R and D. Now if you remember, we were saying we did a session on you know that patents we looked at. And then we said design registrations. If you recall my first lecture, we said, you know, functional features are protected by patents, but aesthetic features that when we look at the shape and ornamentation of articles, they are protected by what are known as design registrations. And you can protect them. So those are the non-functional features that get protected by design registrations. We did this briefly in one of our earlier lectures. But when you do design registration, Mind you, different articles, articles, right? They are classified into different categories, like food stuff, articles of clothing, husband repeat. We said this, and therefore there are different classes of designs. And therefore, if you want to protect your distinctive design in more than one class, then you have to go and file your design registrations in these different classes to get your protection. Now, mind you, as we said, in the case of patents, there is an international patent classification system, IEC. And we did that last time. I said that the all technologies are broken, or rather classified, not broken, classified almost up to the last point. So there's a major class, and we saw that A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then from there, we found that how each of those classes get into subclasses and further subdivide into subclasses, et cetera, et cetera. So all the technologies get divided that way, classified that way. And therefore, you can do a search also using those classifications. Similar in design, also because of these classes, one, two, three, you can see here each one of them up to. 31, and there's a general one called 99 that if things are not covered in the 31, they come in the class of 99. Now, in all these, so therefore, even designs, as they are filed in various countries and they are granted in various countries and registered, 
in various countries, all these designs get classified along the, their class numbers. And therefore, if you want to do a search of design registrations in different databases, then class numbers again become very, very useful for us out there. And these class numbers, which you're seeing here, these class numbers are, you know, like we had the international patent classification. This was one aspect. Similarly, the design classifications, also there is this international. So all these class numbers are international. They're used in all the design offices around the world in the same way. And therefore the databases are structured that way. So if you want to search and this, all the design classifications come under what is known as a Locarno, Locarno is a place, Locarno classification. Now, under the Locarno classification, so what I've done, I wanted to show you one of the databases, right? So we can do one thing. We will go to the database and actually see how the database searches are done. Okay. So I will I will come out of this slide, this sharing and I will go again uh, one minute. I'll again go to share content and uh, I will um, I've come back to the same one. So I stop sharing here. Share, share content. Uh, uh, okay. What are uh, here? It is. Uh, and has it come? No, it has not come. One minute. Uh, I it will come now. Right. Has this come? Has the website come? Yes, sir. Good. So I just flip onto what is known as the Locarno classification. And if you put, you know, Locarno classification in the net, or so you will get, you'll come to this particular website. I will send you all the details. Now, as we said, you know, when you come to this classification, see, you can see here that it gives you on one side, you know, what is the addition? Forget that for the time. Class index, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in class one, okay, in class one, we saw it was all about food stuff. And class one, zero one is bakery products. So if you're looking at bakery products and designs of bakery products, then you must pick up from here that the Locarno classification is 01-01, okay? You must remember that. So we don't know by heart. So if you're looking at, if you remember if, uh, that yesterday, as we were doing our work, see here, all these on gloves, travel goods is class three, brushware, class four, class five is, you know, style six is furnishing, then, you know, the eight is tools, and you can see under each of them, there is a subclass. There are a whole bunch of subclasses as you go along on the, onto these. So for example, say packaging and containers, your bottles plus, that is 0901, your class nine. Storage cans, drums, 0902. So if you're searching for drums, boxes, cases, so if you're doing some design work on these, bags, sachets, then it become 905, et cetera. If you remember yesterday in the international classification for patent, we were looking at, um, we looked at chairs, for example. So let us come here and see where will that be? So 15 is uh, their photographic equipment, then musical instruments, printing machinery, stationery, and office equipment. Right? Then you have sales, games, toys. Uh, you know, uh, where is it gone? Yeah. 
medical, building units, construction, lighting apparatus, tobacco, pharmaceuticals, device and equipment of fire hazards. Then these are all writing materials, graphics. So now, so when you come to this out here, see each one of these are under a classification, right? And you have to find out which is the classification and the subclassification from this list. And once you have looked at the classification, subclassification from this list, you put, you pick up that number from here, right? Pick up that number from here, and then you go to another database, what is known as the WIPO Global Database. I will go to that and show you how we will pick up, you know, uh, from there all the other bits from uh, how to search in those. So now let us say that we are looking at just argument purposes. Um, yeah, furnishings out there, seats. So seats are 0601, couches. So these are seats for couches, benches, saunas, sofas, mattress supports, then covered furniture, other furniture and furniture parts, composite furniture, mirrors, frames. So suppose we are doing some research and we want to design, you know, tables. So see here, the table is 0603. Let's remember that. It's 0603. So what I will do, I will immediately, I will stop sharing this. Then I will go to share content. And then let me go to Has it come? Has this come? No, sir. No, sir. It has not come. Yes. One minute. So let me see why it has not come. Why it has not come? It has not come. That's the PowerPoint. Uh, this is a. Uh, Oh, I have got it on my system and I'm trying to see, okay, what I will do, that too many windows open, I'll close some windows so that um, Google Chrome calendar, why is IPO Global Database. Why it is not come? Why Global Database is sitting here? Uh, it is very much there. Uh, yeah. uh, now it has come. No, sir. No, sir. It will not come. I don't know why it is not coming. One minute. Let me again share. Okay, let me share the browser and go. It also doesn't seem to help. Uh, one minute. I got that other one very clearly. Stop sharing, share, share my meeting window. Because I have it on my screen open, but why I'm not able to? Get that. Mm. One minute. I'm just trying to see why why this mess has happened. This is ah here. Now you'll get it. Ah, now you'll get it. Are you seeing this now? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, good. You are seeing it now, right? Now, this is the database from the World Intellectual Property Organization. It's a global database uh, for all design registration files all across the world, except for India. Okay? Because India is not a part of that international agreement. But otherwise, all of the countries are marked here. Now, when you look at this, see here, it says search by design, search by names, search by numbers, search by dates, search by country, search by prior priority means the first time when it was filed. Now, when you come into all this and see so suppose I say Locarno class. So according to the Locarno classification. And uh, what was the number, if you remember? Do you recall the number I told you? Zero, what zero was the number? Sorry? 06-03. 06-03. Okay. And I say, now, you know, like this, and I'm not putting any filtrations out there. And I'm now doing a search based on the Locarno class. And I say search. Okay. So it is searching all, oh, sorry. Ah. Now see here on that. And you can now see on this lower One minute. Huh? Now, see here, as you saw it down here, right? You can actually flip through and see that this design was filed and there was in the US. It's all US. This is China out here. Okay. These are all in China out there. You can see and all that. And you can go on searching all of them. But if you want to look at, for example, you know, I will put a designation here and the Locarno classification was zero. Uh, how much was it? Zero six dash? Zero three. Sorry? Zero three. Zero three. Hmm. Zero six dash zero. Sorry. Uh, zero three. And then I will go by what is known as designation. And let us say, I would find in China, what are the type of, you know, the designs on this that have been filed and they're registered. There you are. Uh, uh, now, sorry, I didn't say China, designation, source, status, designation, China, uh, oh, I lost it here. One minute. Lucarno class. Now, zero, see, you can see here all sorts of things, 0603. But uh, let us see it covers bedside tables, billiard tables, all the things are here. Okay, all these type of tables are covered here, out there. So now, if we wanted to look at China, so we, that is for China, uh, one minute, CN is China, yes. So we have to filter by that. Now, when you filter by that, look at this part, how powerful this database is. Immediately from all those, you get all the designs that have been filed and registered in China. You can see here. So what I'm saying is that, you know, searching these databases is so easy nowadays. Now imagine, when I was doing my research, right, going back by how many years? 1971, when I was doing my PhD, right? None of these were there. And if you wanted to do any searches and whatnot, then you literally had to struggle through hard copies. And you didn't have hard copies of all the countries in India. So we just, just did not have it. But today, see how easy it is for you that if you want to look at designs, across the world, you'll be able to see them, you know, straight away in this. Any questions at this stage before I go out of this 
a particular part any questions at this stage please no sir okay are you clear that how simple it is yes yes sir yes so so actually you know you have to spend some time if you spend some time with these databases you will be able to do it yourself so simple as that so that's where i should and this is the database i mean you just saw that screen i just took a screen turn and put it here for you, out there so that is how it is and you just saw how easy it was to just click on the country here filter it with that country and there you got all the results out there very simple for designs it's very simple it is it's a bit complicated we will come to that part next after this so this is where we stand now let us say i have done my research i filed patents i filed design registrations i filed copyrights i've got them let's assume and i am the owner of all these intellectual property rights what do i do with it is it like a publication and then okay i just put it in my cv and just so many papers etc answer is no the moment you have patents what do you do you start thinking what do i do with that patent so what you can do you can suppose two things if your organization wants to use it to make something it can do it provided of course the regulatory clearances are there the other part is that the organization can make it if i am working for a certain company they may make it but they may not be able to sell it so for selling what they will do they will give the rights for selling to somebody and that's called licensing so they will license the product to somebody to sell and because patents are territorial they may allow if they have patents in various countries then they will have the ownership in that country for that patent for that product for the process and then they may allow somebody else to market it and give a license so they may make it allow somebody to market it they may license it to somebody so that somebody else can manufacture it but they, the the people who own the patent may market it the other way around you negotiate license for manufacture or marketing with geographical breakups because now you have the geographical breakups you can work work out arrangements for cross licensing what does cross licensing mean licensing means that i keep the ownership with me and give the permission to somebody else to use it it's like renting i have a flat i allow somebody else to use it i rent it to somebody so when you rent a license i'm sorry when you rent a patent it's called licensing you continue to be the owner somebody else uses it because you have allowed the person to use it however suppose suppose somebody had a house in mumbai suppose i have a house in mumbai and you have a house in kolkata and i get into an agreement with you that whenever i am in kolkata i will use your house and i say whenever you are in mumbai you will use my house okay so what have we done we have said that you can use my house in mumbai and i can use your house in kolkata means we have cross licensed we have cross rented so you are renting your place in kolkata to me and i am going to rent you correspondingly you know my house in mumbai so what have we done we have done a cross crossing of licenses and therefore if somebody has a license for some patent and you have a license for some other patent and you think you know cross licensing is a good idea for example suppose you suppose you have a um, suppose you have a license suppose you have a license i'm sorry suppose you have a patent okay for the ball point of a ball point pen ball point and you have done a lot of innovations on the ball point and somebody has you know uh, has got the let us say a patent for the ink i can now 
you can't make the ballpoint pen with the ink and sell it. And the person who has the patent for the ink cannot make a ballpoint pen because you have the patent for the ballpoint. Now, both of you want to make pens. What will you do? The person who has the patent for the ink will give you a license to use the patent for the ink and you have the patent for the ballpoint and therefore you will give him the license to uh, for the using the ballpoint therefore he can make a ballpoint pen with the ink and you can make a ballpoint pen with the ink so you are cross licensed so you can work out an arrangement of having cross licensing clear then obviously with all this you can work out how much of royalty you will take for having rented this it's a rent on that you can do that then nowadays because patent is a property you can take that property it's an intangible property but you can take the intangible property and actually go to a financial institution to a bank or a financial institution and say that, look, this is my patent. And if there are special people who do valuation of the patent, to tell you the value of this patent is so much. So like gold, you can take it to the bank, you can take it to a financial institution, and you can actually mortgage it for securitization purposes. So you give your patent, the bank or the financial institution holds it and gives you money against that. So. It can be through the securitization. Very important. You can see how much it can do. Similarly, I have the intellectual property that I have a patent or the copyright or trademark or whatever. I can sell it because it's a property. So if there's a proper value to it, it's an asset. I can sell it. So, okay, by doing that, and that's called assigning or selling. Also, what we can do. We can set up joint ventures. We can set up franchise systems. So we can do a whole bunch of things with it. Not only that, many of the people who have patents or copyright or design registrations or all of them together, many of them donate, like you donate property. You can donate your patent, you can donate your trademark, you can donate your copyright, you can donate your things. Okay, very interesting. You can donate or if because you have filed your patent in various countries and if you think you are not going to do too much of business in certain countries what will you do you will stop paying the renewal fee let it lapse doesn't matter not a business interest to you so you can see you know when you pop one directional issue Whereas when you go into intellectual property rights, whether it's patent or design registrations or trademark or copyright or whatever, or protection of plant varieties and all those things, because that has an asset value, you can do lots and lots of things with that asset value. This is something that you have to appreciate that what all you can do. If you can see the value of your work. That's the reason I said it is intellectual property rights in the integrating it and making it a part of your value chain research value chain this is where all these things come i mean i have spent the last the first you may say 25 years i did research and i was in industry and all sorts of things the last 30 years i've been doing intellectual property rights and all these things together with academics and industry and because you can see from this slide how much of potential is there to do from whatever work that you're doing. If you can, you know, capture it and put it in the form of intellectual property as well, in addition to your publications, then you can see what sort of value you can create, not only for the country, but for the entire world. Very important. You have to think much wider and broader than what you do. Otherwise, generally in our academic thinking, we get very narrowed in our thinking. We get lost into a very narrow world out there. But you have to think in a much wider thing for society and otherwise. So this is the part. What are the options for the IPR holder? 
This is what we have to understand on this. Similarly, as we go from here, so you know you have a patent you have to disclose. You have a design registration you have to disclose. You have a trademark you have to disclose. To get a copyright you have to disclose. To protect new plant varieties you have to disclose. But there are certain aspects of your work which are never disclosed. And those parts of the work which are generally not disclosed, but disclosed only under a secrecy agreement, are what is what is known as know-how. That is the reason across the world that no managing the know-how, for example, if you take you know a whole range of things of how to construct a nuclear reactor, how to do this, how to do that, all that. Many of those things may be known, but many other aspects of that may not be known, and that comes as a and that is kept generally with the people so that they are you're able to negotiate deals and contracts, etc., in a very, very cohesive manner. So that is that part. So then you can do contract research development, establish joint ventures, you can set up plants. I mean, that's the sort of thing I've done all through my lifetime in doing things of this type on this. So very important, collaborative R&D. So when you're doing collaborative R&D, one aspect that you have to think about is that when, fine, we are collaborating, but suppose something comes out of it, which could have applications, which could have a commercial value, then at that time, who will own that? Those must come onto an agreement so we do a research agreement, we put all these things as a part of all those agreements, and then we work it through from there. So, so these are the various options that are there before the, uh, you know, before all the, uh, the researchers that are there. And what you are doing is you're doing the research part of it, but from now onwards, you also, oh, sorry. So from now onwards, you have to also think hard of all these other features and aspects that you need to really work out as well. So, so that's the reason we thought that in these few lectures, we will give you some outline. And then of course we can go into details as and when we want to out there. Then let's go to the, this one. I showed it to you that day and I said, I'll discuss this in some, Detail. Now, see when we have an idea. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, tell me. Tell me, please. Has the slide changed? Somebody asked a question. Somebody said something. Is a slide is a slide seen? Can somebody respond to tell me with the slide? Yeah, yes, 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 sir. Sir. yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, what I'm saying is, see, we started with an idea. So let us try to plot a graph. It is a conceptual graph. Huh? It's a conceptual representation. We have this idea and conception. So when we have an idea, let's assume for a moment that I have an idea to save energy. So I say that, you know, I don't want to have lifts in a building because it consumes electrical energy. But if I design some sort of thing which I can put under your shoe, and let us say you jump slightly, then you go up to the first floor, you jump a bit hard to go to the second floor automatically because there's something under your shoe, under your heel, which bounces you up exactly to the first floor and you bounce a bit more, it bounces you to the second floor. Then I don't need a lift. Beautiful in invention. Actually, this is not my idea. This is an idea which comes from a very old film. If, many, if any one of you get a chance, do see a film called Absent Minded Professor. In fact, this concept was there in a basketball field. Where he had actually says he was a chemist and he invented this thing called flubber and he put it under the heels 
of his team and they were jumping all over the place and actually going and scoring uh, uh, you know baskets out there in the basketball match but let's assume for a moment i have that idea and i think that's a great idea i go to an industrialist or somebody with that idea okay even if i file the patent when i have done this here then that industrialist see the realizable value of this is very low because it's still an idea not really done the proof of concept so what happens the realizable value of the intellectual property at that stage to the potential value where the potential value is high the realizable value is low therefore the ratio of realizable value to potential value will be very low so if i went to somebody at this height this stage i may not get the full benefit, full value of it because the realizable value is low but when i narrow no i do this patent search i do all that so there is a bit of a confidence that my thinking is in the right direction i am novel in my thinking i am done this and i do some experiments and i come to proof of concept the moment i do proof of concept and i find a patent or a trademark or a design registration or a copyright then at that stage when i go to somebody to negotiate a price i get a higher one why because from here to here this tremendous value addition done and therefore the value of the intellectual property becomes higher over the realizable value of intellectual property the potential value of intellectual property then relatively goes up and i am somewhere here in this particular thing and then from there when i come and then filter it down do a lot more work and come to more definitive things i call them as crystallization to tangibles they are more tangible so the value goes up from there i create some sort of marketable product the value goes even up now it's simply marketable product but not probable does not um, give me great value why because it needs regulatory clearance now moment you do the regulatory clearance value of that goes up and therefore on this side the x axis i'm sorry the y axis the realizable value of ip to potential value of ip starts going up and market acceptability it goes even higher etc etc and then when it comes to the you know technology life cycle and the product life cycle then it start going down and then immediately at that stage i take a call do i want to still hold to my intellectual property or i want to let it off or just simply let it go so all these are considerations that i need to have when i'm doing work and why doing all this because ideas to realization there is a value addition value maximization to business there is value addition and as this goes up in this direction the risk to the business comes down that's why you get a higher value so this is a whole issue of management of technology and commerce how do you do a technology and commerce management this is how you do on this particular thing. and while doing all this you know this light green color box is a very important aspect of that box and that is that when you are into this particular bit you will find that immediately here that you know your protection of contract you know the contracts we talked about valuation transactions of ip you know all these become important so the whole management of the intellectual property rights becomes a very very important issue as far as we are concerned in in doing uh, this entire thing so you can see that intellectual your your whole research and development work together with intellectual property rights actually becomes a part of a business plan it all depends on how you want to think and if you want to become an entrepreneur which is one of the goals of hbni hbni says can we create entrepreneurs Now, unless our researchers start thinking in these terms, they cannot become entrepreneurs. You have to think much broader than merely publishing papers and all. You have to keep your academic excellence, but while keeping this academic excellence, you have to think much broader in these terms. And that is why we are doing this particular course and making this as a part of your research process. Right now, let's go further. into this so this is a very very involved process out there 
And so this is where it is that you want to manage your IP. You have to do a valuation of that. If you don't put a value, nobody will take, but there is a, that's a very special, um, it's a very, very special, um, um, I said knowledge level and skill level. For example, if you take me, even with my 30 years of experience in intellectual property rights, I'm not a valuer of intellectual property rights. I can't do valuation. It's a very special subject, right? I can do evaluation, but I can't do valuation. Very important. So evaluate IPR portfolio with its fits. That is what I do. Evaluate IPR transaction options, I do. How, how to sell intellectual property, how to buy intellectual property, how to exchange intellectual property. All this is there. Then, because as a technologist and into this field, you have got technology and IPR portfolio and life cycle analysis become very important. And then, exploring security, I talked about mortgaging and whatnot, that all. So, these are very special areas, mind you, in the whole world. I don't think there are more than 20 or 30 people who actually can do good valuation of IPR and good securitization work. But this is the future. This is the future. Intellectual property and the knowledge economy, whole thing depends on these, apart from all the other things that I've already indicated. Now, as you go along, yeah, so these are, and in this part, another very important aspect is because it's a property, you must find out when this property has the highest value. If you want to come out of that property, you must know when to sell it, when to give it away. So that's what is known as IPR portfolio maintenance and including exit out there. What do you exit from? So all the management systems for property and assets are applicable to this particular field also. You can see there's a complete cross fertilization between these techno legal features of our work together with economics, et cetera, et cetera, that comes with it. So this is something that is very significant and important as well as we are concerned. Not only that, it, when you are working, suppose people who have a lot of patents and they combine in a certain way, but if they're going to kill competition in the market, and there are other laws of what is known as competition commission, and they come and stop them from doing that. People steal intellectual property. Then you must know how to catch them. You know, what use is it that you have some patents and people are copying and you don't even know? And what's the use of having that patent? What's the use of having that copyright if everybody's copying you without your permission? What is the use of that design registration if everybody's copying you, you know, uh, even though it was your design registration, yeah. you must know how to manage it, how to enforce your intellectual property. Yeah. It's like saying I have three flats and all three are illegally occupied by people yeah. and I'm doing nothing about it. Then what's the use of having that flat? So this is where all these come. And then we also create what is known as litigation strategy, how to fight these battles in court. Now, all this is how when a company runs. Similarly, mind you, very important that today when the United States is negotiating a trade deal with India or European Union is negotiating a trade deal with India or Australia or Japan is negotiating a trade deal with India, one of the top items that comes in every trade deal is intellectual property rights. So they say that if your intellectual property rights management thing is not in place, they don't trade with you. So these are very important areas of, uh, of, um, of developmental economics and research. Similarly, if we go to the next part, we said that in the case of a patent, you have to disclose such that a person skilled in the art can reproduce the invention. Therefore, writing a patent 
is itself an art. You learn how to do it. It's not like writing a paper. Paper possibly everybody can write. Patent not everybody can write. But there's a way of disclosing. There's a way of claiming. There's a way of doing things. And it needs a lot of training to write a patent on this. So this is a, it's a very significant aspect. And similarly, if you remember the third item in a patent I had said, novelty, inventive step or non-obviousness, and whether it is capable of industrial application. So in all of them, we have to show whether there is going to be that whether whatever I did is capable of industrial application. That there is a usefulness, that there is a use on this place. So this is something that we need to look at very, very uh, carefully and uh, systematically out there. Okay. So this is something that is under concern. Now, what I plan to do is I want to get out any questions at this stage, please. Any questions at this stage? Please feel free to ask me if you have any questions. You know, I must tell you there's a difference between lecturing to you and lecturing to people in the universities. In universities, when I lecture, you know, people are, people actually keep hounding you with hundreds of questions. Here, I don't see anybody asking any questions. That's the difference between lecturing to you and lecturing to university people. Okay, uh, in, in IITs and others. But nevertheless, forget about that part. Now, let me come to, uh, let me come to one aspect. Now, now again, I'm trying to share, I know why it is not coming. Uh, this I have already done, this I've done. Settings. Mm. Let me get out of that. Uh, let me see if I can share this now. Ah, there it comes. Yeah, I wanted to, since we have a few minutes now, I wanted to share with you the Indian database. Now, the Indian, the intellectual property rights database or the website is called ipindia.gov.in. And when you come to, you know, ipindia.gov.in, you will get this site. Now, here, so you can see your office of the Controller General of Patents, Designs, Trademarks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And here it says patents. And when you come here, you see all that things, designs, trademarks, geographical indications, and this is a, their training center. Now, in this, forget about everything else. Today you can do e-filing and whatnot. Okay, nowadays they don't accept any hard copies. Everything is done e-filing. But there is something called public search. When you click on the public search, can you see it has changed? Now you see public search patents, trademark designs, electronic register of patent agents. Now when you go to patents, click here. And you can come here, it says in pass. This is the Indian patent database. Okay. This is the Indian patents database. Now you can see here, it tells you patent search, you know, publication type, published, granted. When you use the word granted, means it went through the examination and you have got the patent. The patent has been granted to you. Publication means you have applied for the patent. You have not yet got the patent, but 18 months are already over from the time you file the patent application. Okay. So that is, that is what it means. So it's published. Now, suppose you want to see from here, okay? Now you can see that there are different, I told you that is extremely well-structured, title, abstract, complete specification, application number, patent number. And mind you, the Indian database is not all that well-structured. The foreign databases are even better. But let's come to all this. So now, 
सपोज आई वॉन्टेड टू फाइंड आउट जस्ट आर्ग्यूमेंट पर्पज दिस इज गोइंग नाउ इयर वेर इज इट गॉन एप्लीकेंट एड्रेस एप्लीकेंट कंट्री एप्लीकेंट नेम सपोज इन दैप्लीकेंट नेम आई पुट हि टाटा Tata Memorial Center. I've just put it right, and I want to see in Tata Memorial Center, right? And does Tata Memorial Center have any granted patent? So I say I click it here. I'm doing a search in the Indian database, huh? and then it says, okay, let me put U C K six five search. There you are. Not no no no. Tata. Oh, 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 oh. One second. Not this. Sorry. That's where the problem with the Indian database is. One second. One minute. Let me go back. Yeah. Where is it gone? Yeah. So let's go back again. Let us say. Argument purpose. For example, in 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 TMC, uh, right? There is a very well known, a very famous professor by the name Indranil Mitra. Let's find out if Indranil Dr. Indranil Mitra has any patents. I think he spells his name that way. And let us come here. S Y R J two. Now, no, it's not, not this. Actually, this is not correct. No, this is not correct. One minute. Where is it gone? Granted. Yeah. So let us come back to here. So if I let us say I want to do a search, let us see what are the. Is it ah abstract? Let's go here, and let us say that we are doing uh, that. I am doing research, right now. Here it says title. And suppose I am doing research, you know, on some. Um, let us say. Uh, let us say I am doing you know on pressure cooker. Let And I want to see the granted patents in India. Here, immediately because I put it under that, see all these. Yeah, just one minute. Can you call me after five minutes or ten minutes? So. Um, see here, all these applications, all these are on, you know, pressure cooker. All these patents have been, you know, when you put it within brackets, you will see all of them have been marked, and these are all there. And if you want to see this patent, just click here, and it shows you improved pressure cooker, right? And then. You want to see the application status, so you can do these searches. There you are. It says that somebody they filed it, but they abandoned it. So this is not a good example. Let's go back. Okay. Now let's go back. So 
example, let us pick up another one. Here it says filing date. Maybe they filed it and then took it further. It looks like, looks like there is. Now, this also they have abandoned. This also they have abandoned. See, that means they filed these particular applications but never took it further from there. It's very interesting. Let's go here. Now it looks like somebody has filed heat transfer laboratory, mechanical engineering, etc. It tells you all the details. And you can even see what is the application, what it is, how we will get things out there. So you can see, you can download all these things. How quickly you can do everything, so you can see it. Right? So take this for example. Tells you who did it, who filed it, what is the name of the person, what is this. So it tells you this is the complete specification. If you look at the application status, so you can see how powerful these databases are. So the granted one, if you want to see this particular bit, see you can see all the detailing in this particular page. And you want to see the, his patent certificate? Yeah, I'll show you the patent certificate. See here. So, you know, I mean, you have to learn how to search these databases for the type of information that you're really looking for. So, so now that it's getting to be five, it's five o'clock, I just want to end this series by making four or five general comments. Number one, we gave you a quick rundown that if all the type of work that you do if you have inventions which are addressing issues of functionality and using methods of science technology, you file patents to protect them. If you're only looking at shape and ornamentation and disregarding functionality, you will file a design registration. If you have done some literary work and you've written a poetry or you've done a sculpture, you've done a painting or you've created some artwork out there, including your engineering drawings, all that is protected by copyright, okay? Then if you create some special names, which give, and you name your products by certain things, and you want them to be known by those, then you can file a trademark, very important. So your patents, trademark, copyright, industrial designs. And similarly, if you've done some work on developing new plant varieties, then you can protect it in India under what is known as Protection of New Plant Varieties and Farmers' Rights Act. You can protect it as a new plant variety under that. And like this, there are other fields of intellectual property rights you can, you can actually use to protect your, your work that you're doing in various fields. You can combine it properly, but very important, as I told you, that if you are doing some technical oriented work, you don't search patents, then you're working only on 40 to 50% of the global database and the chance of your repeating what is known in the world is very high. Any questions at this stage, please feel free to ask. It's already five, but nevertheless, um, are there guidelines for what should be the order uh, of patent knowledge in case of multiple? Well, <clears throat> you, you know, normally, you know, in the multi-author papers, we generally like to put them, you know, if you want to avoid all controversies, we generally put them um, in alphabetical order, right? But in patents, also you can put in alphabetical order, you can put it, you know, according to what you people uh, decide among yourselves, you can put it in any order. It doesn't matter whose name is first or whose name is second in a patent because all of, all the, all of them have the same rights. Any other? Any other question? Any other question? Uh, so, Gangli, there is a question above that. Oh, really? Just one second. Let me have a look. If possible, could you shed some light on the trips to ever? Okay. 
on the trip way very good question you see what it is the following that the trips is trade related aspects of intellectual property rights now this is one of the agreements as a part of the world trade organization right india is a member of the world trade organization trips agreement was signed by various countries including india you know why because they wanted to bring in some common i mean common minimum standards for intellectual property rights in various countries now as a result of that you know all the countries have tried to change their laws etc to not to make them same but to make them uh, what is known as to harmonize them that means to set minimum standards now in those minimum standards they all agreed that you know we will respect patents in each other's countries etc 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 and we told you that these rights are given by each country so united states gives rights in united states india gives rights in india <clears throat> bangladesh gives rights in bangladesh etc 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 so now you have these rights in various countries now let's take the pandemic situation at the stage in the pandemic situation what has happened that various companies in different parts of the world have developed their vaccine so they have gone and patented those vaccines in their countries and in many other countries now because they have patented the vaccines and not only in their country in but many other countries which means that if anybody wants to make a vaccine has to go to that company take permission to make that particular one in that in the in the country now point is that okay that therefore what it means that today if anybody wants to make a vaccine then they have to go to those companies and take a license correct take a license and say okay please give me permission to make the vaccine now once they give them the permission if they don't give them the permission to take the vaccine they can't take the vaccine but then the government may have to step in in public interest to say no 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 my people are dying in corona etc and for the government may like to step in so the government generally does not like to step in unnecessarily so what all the countries especially india and south africa did is took a proposal to the world trade organization and said for the purposes of the pandemic can these people who have the patents put a patent waiver say okay i will not enforce my patent why because out of public good and public interest we i am going to allow if you want to use the patent please go and use it you need not come to me for permission that is a patent waiver okay so you waive your right to the patent even though patent belongs to you you tell that okay fine go and use it but only for the pandemic purposes and only during this time not beyond so india and south africa put this particular proposal to the wto this is something that's being debated and every day the debate goes on in wto on this they have not yet taken the full decision on this but there are some countries who are supporting it some countries are not there is a huge political um, issue on this particular bit and now what they are possibly going to agree is is that they will they will say that okay we may give you the waiver now the other part they may give the patent waiver okay but mind you a vaccine you can make but there are lots and lots of know how that is also there in the, that is not there in the patent now who will give the know how so simply a patent waiver by saying okay go and use the patent is not good enough you have to give the know how as well so that's why it's a big political issue it's a big issue across the world and this debate is still going on in the world trade organization clear that is what it is and all the uh, literature uh, i mean so my lectures are being uploaded by professor kumar uh, sometime between today or tomorrow because i have sent it across to him okay
Sir, I already sent to the our webmaster, so it will be uploaded very soon. Maybe today itself it may be uploaded. And I've also put the um, the IIT Jodhpur that uh, guide. Yes. So that is also you there. Know, you can start using that freely, and you know at a later stage, if you people think it is necessary to have a workshop on how to search patents and it would be useful, then please come back to Professor Tomar, and then uh, we can probably plan one good, uh, you know, one or two workshops in small groups out there so that we'll actually do a hands-on and take you through all that. So that will all become very useful for you in planning your research and doing your research. So with this, uh, it brings me to the end of my five lectures. These five lectures are, you know, like what? You know, it's like me taking you to the Himalayas, right? And then suddenly there's a lightning and you see a flash Apart, as you have all seen in my life, right? So this is like the flash. So these five lectures are like a flash, okay? But this just for an appreciation for you. Now you can go into details as and when required, and we can look into it. So over to you. Yeah, thank you, Professor Ganguly, for uh, enlightening the, all the students and to me also with really a new experience. Though I missed some portions, I have tried to understand this part. Uh, I have some uh, points to mention to the students. Uh, one is that this uh, feedback, we have sent a feedback to all the students about the course, how it went through a Google link. So our people have sent you an email where the link is given. All the students should submit the feedback using that link. There is a word file in that link. And also the assignments that we have already been you have been given two assignments so far so you can uh, submit them through your respective coordinators there are coordinators identified for each ci or occ so do submit them in time if you have any further questions you can write to me about the course any clarification so with this, uh, I would like to thank once again, Professor Ganguly for giving us his time and enlightening us on the innovations in IPR and patent laws. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very, thank much. You very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.